Hi guys, welcome. In this video, I want to discuss about the behavior that you do have for all the RE framework project types. And it's related to exception handling and especially when it starts the RE framework process. Now I'm gonna make an assumption that you know already how the RE framework works. Now, in case you don't know, I will leave in the description a couple of links to have a look. So the project which I have here, it's an empty RE framework with a couple of changes. I do have in the initial application, I do have an open browser. I'm searching on Google uh, the word Yahoo in the close all application. I'm having an attached browser with the close tab. And in the select, I'm having Chrome, uh, the word Yahoo for the Google search. And also I have changed log messages from trace to info to both to close to initial application. Also in the config file, I have changed the retry mechanism from zero to one. So from the constants, I have added here three in order to add a retry mechanism. Now, as you may know, this will retry the mechanism for the transaction item. However, what if the RE framework was unable to initialize? So you have an error to the init all application. Now what will happen? So first let's establish the normal flow and how the RE framework works. I'm going to just make a recap. Now I have executed RE framework previously. So the first one, it, it is the kill processes. This one is the called, then the opening, then it's trying to get some data. By the way, I don't have any data for this process. So it finishes with no more transaction data. And then the close process, uh, the close application it's called. So I have this, then the initial application and then the close. Now what if, in the initial application, I'm gonna have an error. For this case where I have just one application, uh, the probability will be very low. But what if you have two application or even three or even more, you want to go in a remote desktop. So somehow you're gonna crash here. Now let me show you how this would look like. What's the behavior for this? And the best way to do that, I'm gonna just hit a throw. I'll just use a new exception. And I'm going to just throw, let's say, test exception. Now I'm going to do the publish. The reason I'm not running in the studio is because I don't want to see the exception in the studio. I'm going to go to tenant, hit publish. I have published a couple of times previously. I'm going to go here and hit a run. Also, I have this robot hosted in orchestrator. So I'm having here uh, running. My process is currently running. Job started processing, it's finished. As you can see, it's synchronized uh, with the RE framework. Let's go to view the logs. Now the logs are not refreshed exactly. So I'm gonna hit another refresh. So let's see what is the behavior. The executor is started, it's opening the application. Then an exception is thrown. This will invoke even further. The close application will be hit. And because there is no open application because uh, the open application flow crashed, the touch browser also crashed. Now I want to notice that I have also changed the timeout for the uh, touch browser because I want to limit this one. So I have to add it to five seconds. Now, as you can see, my RE framework was not able to run successfully. So this one, it is in a failed state. Despite I had an error for the opening application, I don't have any data related to get transaction data. Now, if I would have, then the close all application will be executed and the opening application will be executed again. So that will activate the retry mechanism. But when I don't have any data, my opening application is crashing. I see an error here. The, also the crash is crashing and I can see that my process runs successfully. So this one for me, it's an inconsistent state. Now I don't know if this is really successful or not. For me, this is not a successful process even I don't have any item here added because, because I wasn't able to open the application. Now, what would be the cause here? For attended robot, this is not a problem, but for unattended, when you have an unattended robot and you want to run, then uh, you want to be 100% that the process executed successfully. And also the current limitation, the UiPath orchestrator, you cannot set a trigger for this process, let's say I'm gonna add a new trigger 
for the process which I have just played. I'm gonna just name, give a name. If I want to execute this one daily, I don't have at the moment of this recording a possibility to add a retry policy. So let's say uh, if this one is failing, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna retry another again. And also with the current RE framework implementation, this is not reported, the state is not reported to the orchestrator back. So my problem is that I cannot have a guarantee that my initial application has been executed successfully because maybe you don't have things related to transaction item, but instead you want you here to do one time actions. So what would be a possible fix? Well, a possible fix would be to add a retry mechanism for the initial application, but also I don't want to close all applications. I want to kill the applications because basically uh, the initial application, it is not executed successfully. Now, having this case, as you can see, when the initial application is not executed successfully, the close actually is crashing here to the attached browser. So that would mean that I have two directions. I can either set continue on error true, with, that would ignore any potential attached browser, but I can also use an if, I can check if the element exists, if the window exists, I'm gonna attach and I'm gonna put this attached browser inside the if and so on. But that would also alter the behavior for the close all application. It would become close all the application if they are open. And if they're not open, they will not throw an exception. So I'm perfectly fine having exception caused by the close all application when this application, they are not open. So basically I don't want to fix a problem in the close all application which is related to initial applications or the state machine itself. Now, what would be another method to fix init all application? Well, you may be tempted to use the retry scope. Now, this will also work. If I'm gonna just put every activity here in the it retry scope, it will just execute gracefully. But let's consider this case. I'm gonna have two open browser inside retry scope. So I'm gonna just copy, hit, hit another paste. And let's see, this is a first application and this is the second application. If the error is occurring here after, it will mean I'm gonna have an open browser caused here. This one, it will crash. Then it will uh, call the close all application and this will not be executed. But the second time when I'm gonna just uh, called the initial application, I'm still having one window open from the previous. So this is not good. Ideally, what I would like to do is to call the kill all processes when the initial application, it is not executed successfully. So this is not possible. Now, the way how I suggest to resolve this is to use a workaround. So I'm gonna just create another initial application and I'm gonna just give a name implementation. Now to this implementation, I'm gonna still stick to the original um, initial application. I'm gonna delete this retry scope. I'm gonna leave this row here and I'll do the retry mechanism in the initial application because this is already called by the RE framework. So I'll delete the retry scope and also the row. Now it's up to you to leave the log message here or to here, but uh, be consistent, please. So I'm gonna just leave in the two places, opening application, retry. I'm gonna just uh, modify the log. And here I want to use a classical try cache because I want to do an exception handling. Now to the initial application, I'm gonna just add the old implementation with the import arguments in config. By the way, because I have copied and pasted the file, I'm still having the arguments uh, in the description from the previous workflow. So I'm having a try. And then if I will have an any exception, I'm gonna just catch all the exception. I want to keep that in mind. So because I want to keep this exception, I need to use an assign. And I'm gonna assign this to a variable, which I'm gonna define right now. I'm gonna just give it an X. And to the X, I'll just set exception. Now to this variable, which I have defined here, I will set the system exception. By the way, if you don't have here, click browse for type. I'm gonna set the scope to init all application. And here, what I'll do, 
well, I would like to add a retry. So I can either use a while, a while loop. Uh, I can uh, put this try catch while I, I have reached a number of times. But the one which I like most is to use a for each. So I'm gonna use the for each. I'm gonna just name this uh, item to I, or I can use index. It's really up to you. And here in the in, I'm gonna say enumerable that range. And let's say I'm gonna retry five time maximum. This is the maximum retry number. I'll go here, put the catch. I'm gonna try to execute this try catch block. But if I have an exception, I want to throw it or I want to retry. So the exception attempts, uh, the last exception I'm keeping in this X. Now what I want to do is before executing the try, I want to make sure that I don't have any exception remember. So my exception will be nothing at the beginning. If I will just execute successfully the implementation, I want to exit this loop. So this can happen with a break. I'm gonna just put a break here just after the initial application has been executed successfully. This will mean that uh, the break will be only executed when there will not be any exception. And because I want to read this uh, easier, I'm gonna just collapse. And after this for which, please keep in mind that my last exception, it will be kept in that variable X. So what I need to do, I'm gonna just put an if here at the end. And if the exception is not nothing, what I'll do. So I'm gonna use the throw, but I'll not create another exception. I'm gonna use the exception, which will be initially. So I'm gonna still use X. So with this said, let's read what we have done until now. We are opening the application and we are creating a loop with the maximum five times. For the first time, I'm gonna set the assign the X to nothing. I'm gonna try, execute this. If this will be successfully, I'm gonna hit break. So I will just exit the for each. If this will have an exception, I'm gonna go here in the exception. Keep in mind the exception. And also this will enter again in the for each. Now also this will clear my first exception indeed. And it will have a similar behavior like the retry scope it has. The second attempt, we're gonna enter here. Now, if the second attempt will be successfully, then I will just hit a break. But also what I want to do is when an error is occurred, I want to call the kill all application. So basically that's the reason I'm using this for and the try catch because otherwise I could use the retry scope. So when an error it is occurred, I'm gonna just go here in the catch and I will just drag and drop the killer processes. I'm gonna do that just after the exception has been done. So if we read again, we have the first attempt that it's having an exception and I'm gonna just kill all the processes. Then we'll have the second attempt because we are not exiting in this for each. The index will be two. I'm gonna go and try. Sorry, I have just double click. I'm gonna go and try. Now, if this will be successfully, I'm gonna hit break and the X will be nothing. So uh, this will not enter in this if, but if I'll just reach five time, I'm gonna have the exception. Then it will means that this assign, it will contain the last exception. I'm gonna kill all the processes and the exception will be the last exception will be here in this variable. And in this if, it will be, if there is any exception here, I'm gonna just throw it back. And this is the mechanism because I want to tell to the reframework that an exception occurs, so I still want to have the current behavior. Great, with this having said, let's try to mimic the current behavior. So I'm just gonna still to have this exception here. Let's make another publish. And I'm gonna hit next, select the tenant and hit publish go to the assistant and hit a run. Go to the jobs, the latest one, and I'm looking forward to finish the execution. And as you can see, we do have a couple of time the opening application that is triggering. And let's have a look to all the traces. So the first one, it's Ari framework, it's starting in opening application with the retry. This one, it's opening the application, by the way, it's the implementation version. 
is throwing an exception, it's opening, it's testing, uh, and we should have also the kill exception, but we don't see because it is a trace in order to see this uh, modification. We're gonna have a look here to the kill processes and we need to change uh, from the info to trace, hit another publish, install, and hit a run. Go to the jobs. Now, when we're refreshing the logs, we are seeing the full behavior. The RE framework, it executed successfully. First of all, it's killing the process. It's opening the application from the retry mechanism. And then it this ping pong. It's opening the application. It is an exception. It's killing the process. It's opening the application again. And it has the maximum attempts that we have set hard coded to be five. Now we can uh, set this to correspond the configuration that is related uh, from the Excel file, but I'm gonna leave this aside as a homework to you. And at the end, we'll, we'll still have the same behavior, by the way, if the number of attempts, the opening the application has been reached, then the RE framework, it will still be failing. Now there's still something which I don't like that this process is still in the state successfully, but this one we're gonna discuss probably in the later video. Now the RE framework it is publicly available on the GitHub for the UiPath. And I was tempted to make a pull request for the RE framework itself. However, there are a couple of issues here and the people they are complaining that uh, the pull requests are not being merged. And there are currently eight pull requests open and it seems that the UiPath they don't maintain the RE framework itself or at least they don't have resources. Now what I did start is a discussion on the UiPath forum and I'm gonna leave a link here in the description of this video. Well, that was for today and I'm looking forward to hear about how you are dealing with exception handling and when you're dealing with the RE framework. What do you think about this mechanism? I'm looking forward if you have been facing and what it is the mechanism that you are able to resolve and if you didn't face it until now, what you think about this statement? Well, thank you, I'm Daniel, and until the next time, see you soon. Bye.